Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again, Mishmash Monday. Hope you had a nice weekend. Um, believe it or not, I did film a rant uh, before and then I did a couple restorations, which we'll get to in a minute. But um, then I, I, I don't know, I, I, it was six minutes long. It was just too long of a rant. And I, I called my girlfriend. I said, listen, I made a six minute rant. She said, nobody wants to hear you rant for six minutes. And then she hung up on me. So I figured, okay, I deleted them and I'm going to do a short summary of, of what I said before. Now, there's an old saying that says that believe none of what you hear and half of what you see. And uh, think about that for a minute. And it makes a lot of sense. And I'll tell you why. Because the other day I was looking up some news on, um, on Australia, you know, uh, about the wildfires in Australia. And what a shame. What a shame. We got friends in Australia, viewers, friends. And I was just devastated, especially with all the animal deaths, you know. But um, I was talking to a friend of mine and he was saying, yeah, well, you know, there was a lot. They said there was a lot of arsonists and I, you know I'm trying to look it up and trying to and you know something it's funny because they're trying to block certain things from from us finding out about and things like that and you cannot trust the media you cannot you know it's the media has lost all credibility years ago but it's it's gotten to the point now that it's it's insanity especially with the internet and everything you can't trust Google Google's got their own agenda everybody's got their own agenda so where do you get good information from now it's very difficult and I, so I'm looking around and you know I, you know I mean look we all know about this like like Jeffrey Epstein okay come on now come on now you know I mean you, you look at the evidence and I don't care what they tell me I believe what I believe, you know, and there's certain things we all feel that way, you know, we all believe, you know, just the other day was a perfect example when uh, right after the uh, Iran issue, uh, a couple, you know, a couple hours after Iran sent those uh, missiles over to Iraq, all of a sudden a jetliner goes down, you know, and they were saying, oh, no, no, it's, it, it, you know, they checked it out. It was, it was a problem with the plane. I said to my girlfriend right away, I said, I'm telling you right now, I don't care what they tell me. It's it's a little too coincidental, you know, and and the, the jet engines today, they have all kinds of fire suppression units, things like that. And you just it's very difficult for them to just go on fire and take a, a plane. Anyway, now it's turning out we're getting different stories or whatever, but you can't believe the media. So uh, that's my mini rant. OK, <laughs> let's get to some restoration. OK, it is uh, Mishmash Monday. So what do you say we start off the uh, the program with uh, this easy Hopefully easy rest. Just a quick cleanup on this because this is like a warm up to get started today. And and again, this is a small one. And uh, let's let's take this and clean it up and see what it looks like. Okay, here we are at the post wire brush evaluation. Now, the reason you do a wire brush on here, we're going to the uh, the belt the uh, angle grinder and. The angle grinder would take off all the original rust anyway. You don't have to. You could skip the wire brush. The thing is, the reason we do the wire brush is to see if there's any lettering or anything else that we wanted to save. Here, there's nothing except for on this side here. See? So we wire brush that really good, and this is in good shape. Well, we won't touch that. But everything else we're going to have to touch because look at all the pitting, the banging. Look on this side here. We got a couple of somebody used it to punch on or something. And here. Now this is what's really got me. This is the worst kind of rush you could possibly have. Um, this is the kind of stuff you see when you take stuff out of the ocean. You know, it's like really that's that's bad. It's bubbling up. When you see that kind of rust, that's the worst kind. So, you know, we're gonna have to try. We might have to shorten it a little bit. To get rid of all this bad stuff, you got to get that out of there. It's not trustworthy anyway. That's where it will break anyway. So let's go to the grinder. Take out some of the uh, forge marks. Make this into a nice little tool. Okay, we're about uh, half an hour in. Now, let me show you something. You remember those pits that were on the side? You see how you have to go below them to get them out? But now you're going to have to level this out. You know, it's not going to look right with a dip there. Same thing with the other side. See over there? Now, those pits, uh, you know, you get really close already to, to taking the shape out. You got to be careful because you want to go deep enough that it looks good, but you don't want to deform the tool. 
Uh, we still got some more pits here, and you, you see how it makes it uneven when you go with the rough sander and stuff. It, and, you know, over here, remember I told you that stuff goes deep? Look how deep that is. Now, if I try and go any deeper, I'm already uh, compromising, and you know, the integrity of the tool. So you, you always walk in that funny line when you, you do one of these. But uh, now we're going to hit it with a little bit of the, uh, the angle grind to try and clear out some of it. And then we'll go eventually to the belt sander and try and get it nice. Now you know my favorite part, remember what this looked like before we started. And we're calling this project done. Boy, this one came out beautiful, didn't it? And you might see little micro scratches that you think you see, but look here. That is as close to a perfect mirror finish as you can get, right? I mean, all the way down. And uh, this just came out real nice. Now let me show you the projects, that the problems that we had that we encountered. Remember here? I took it down as much as I possibly could. There's still a couple. You see those? I couldn't. If I would have went down there, I would have compromised. As it is now, it's pretty thin. But, you know, you don't use a pry bar of this size for any heavy-duty uh, prying. This would be uh, for getting behind moldings, things like that. Um, obviously, here, yeah, this was always in good shape. Did the other side that it's cleaned up. Uh, mirror it on both sides. Just... The top, remember the top was, uh, again, the top is, look at that. It's it's just a beautiful little, these pry bars, I, you know, everybody likes them, you know. But this one here, what's made this so difficult, it's such a short one, you know. They're usually an inch or two longer. And uh, the guy that I bought this from says he said he even had a shorter one. So I'm looking for that. must be a four-inch one. This would be about a six and a half, and I guess uh, the other ones are like seven or eight. Anyway, let's see what okay, else. Okay, remember got. this tool from the other day, from last Monday's rant. <laughs> um, you know, everybody was saying, I'd like to see if that would expand PVC or how it would expand it. Would it flare it out? Would it bulge? You know, let's so let's take a heat gun, get this nice and soft, and see what this tool does to a piece of uh, PVC. Okay, we have it really nice and hot. We're going to put it in here and... Well, as you can see how, what's what's happening here, obviously, it is widening it up, but I um, it's widening it up in almost like a flare, you know, like if you want to make this into like a funnel, you know, it's not really widening it where you would slip another piece into it, but um, it kind of wants to spring back on itself, so I'm, I'm just rotating it, turning it, rotating it, and see what happens. Okay, this is actually what I expected it to do to make it like almost like a funnel type because of the cone shape of that tool and it wouldn't be an acceptable form to uh, place another pipe in here. I think with the lead pipe what they used to do is melt lead in there to make the seal but um, this is, you know, interesting. Let's see if I could find a piece of thin walled pipe and see if that makes it. Now difference. here's a piece of that uh, PEC tubing and uh, this is used for... Uh, it comes in blue and red. I think that's blue is cold, red is, is hot. And um, I've never tried anything with heat on here, so we'll try and see how this reacts to the same experiment. Okay, it's softened up. I'm kind of expecting this to do the same thing. Uh, we're going to press down on here and expand a little bit. You see here? I'm expecting this to kind of work out the same way it did with the PVC. I'm turning it, squeezing. I'm not squeezing too hard. I don't want to split it. But you can see what's happening. It's creating a funnel type shape. It's not creating a uh, the shape that you would ex you know would hope for. But like I said, if uh, when I'm pressing it in, I think it's going to do the same thing. I think it's going to we'll come back when it's uh, cooled off a little. And here we have the finished product. Uh, you could say I dipped it in some water to cool it off. It is rock solid. It's hard, like it was formed this way. Again, it wouldn't be a good uh, procedure if you want to join two together. However. Uh, if you wanted to use it for something else, whether it be, uh, you know, some kind of, uh, uh, let's say, catching marbles or something for a machine, whatever you had to do to open that up, it does expand it, and it, it doesn't create any cracks or anything, but that's about as wide as it will go, 
Yeah, it's just an experiment. Okay, next up on the Mosh, remember this uh, rocket hammer, this True Temper rocket hammer? You could see here. Uh, first, we're going to do is I don't know if I could save that lettering. This is so far, you know, beat up. And, uh, you know, I would like to take get rid of some of these sharp edges here on this and uh, just make this kind of my own as a, as kind of a user. I have another one that I restored that came out real nice. So let's just see what we can do with this real quick. Let's get to it. Okay, here's our little test sample we did. And I just wanted to do this so you could see the lettering because I'm most likely going to have to take it off because look how deep these pits are. It's it's terrible. Now, this is not a collectible hammer. I mean, you could buy a really a mint condition one in $20 for $20. So, you know, to try and go and save this is just ridiculous. But I want you to see what it is. It's a true temper rocket and you see the patent number. And I don't know what that it's it look could it be A128? I don't know what that number is. It always shows up better when I go later on to do some, but you see that number underneath. Anyway, that might be gone, but you can see there's no, no sense in trying to save a hammer like this, you know, because you're just going to get pitting and it's going to look like garbage. So you either do it all the way or don't touch it at all. Okay, look where we are here. You see now, we took out a lot of those pits, but look at it. Look at it, it's all faceted from the heavy duty grit that we're using because we're using the grinder instead of flop wheel. But that's how you gotta get, that's the only way that'll take this down. You see, now look at it, it's all faceted, right? Now, here's what we gotta do. Uh, we have to smooth it out, obviously, but we're going to use them. We'll use the flap wheel. We'll go to 60 grit flap wheels, you know, and uh, take it down a little bit. But the uh, main thing that we have to see this edge, this is razor sharp now. But I never liked that square edge anyway. So we're going to try and soften that edge all the way down both sides and get okay, that As done. it is, I got way too much time into this hammer now. But here, we got to work on here. You see here, the pit's in there. Got to get rid of that uh, around the ring trying to smooth this out a little bit we're getting getting there as far as the uh, smoothing out the edges we got to work we'll do that on the uh, belt sander because it's easier to handle but it's looking pretty good so let's get to it Now, once again, you know my favorite part. Let's see how this hammer turned out. And we're calling this one done. That's two today we did. And you could see here, again, with a, uh, a mirror a polish and a uh, little bit of red on the bottom just to break it up a little bit. And you could see here that uh, this steel is, is a hard steel to really take down, you know. So this is, if you're going to attempt a job like this, I got to tell you, this is not a job you really want to uh, to do. But I was able to keep, if you look real close here, you could see the rocket. So I was able to keep some of it so you could tell what this hammer is and smooth out the sides here. You could see nice and smooth. But, uh, you know, I have another one of these and, and we got this new real nice here, see. Nice and shiny over here, and and the handle we did up with the 5050 mineral spirits and uh, I'm sorry, 5050 uh, mineral oil and and uh, Vaseline that always does a nice job, and uh, you know let it soak in. So uh, we have another hammer, a masonry hammer, that uh, hopefully we'll be able to uh, to put back into service. Okay, let's see what okay, else. Okay, everybody, got. thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you have a nice day. Take care now. Bye bye.